Sure. I, I remember, um, I think it was like Catch a Rising Star, one of the old Robin Williams kind of debut specials. Uh, if you watch the extended footage of it after he does stand up, he sees his buddy John Ritter in the audience and he's like, oh, let's do some improv. I used to play with them. There's a thing here called uh, uh, D. Marcus had a place on La Brea. Mm -hmm. And Robin and John Ritter and all these other improvisers played it in it. I did too when I came into town. And uh, that's when I first started uh, playing with him. But he also did Second City sets with us all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so now I've heard other uh, improvisers of that generation talk about playing with Robin specifically as, which you would imagine that he was kind of a whirlwind and like you really had to keep up with him. And, and if you didn't, then he would just, he would just go. Yeah, but you, if you're there, he, he, I, I love playing with him. We, mm -hmm. had, uh, we did uh, some great stuff together. Uh, if he senses weakness or hesitancy, he'll just go. To just leave you in the dust. Yeah. Uh, so that never happened to me, but I saw it happen uh, <laughs> to people. But uh, it's a, I don't. I don't think it was an ego thing. I think it was more of an anxiety thing. Of a, like he wants to take care of the show. Yeah. yeah. So he doesn't have time for you if you uh, if you're not with him, mm -hmm. or if you're trying. You know, if you're trying to do you know just the typical things of conflict or withholding or whatever it is or being paralyzed he's going well there's an audience here <laughs> yeah we got work to and do. he'll take care of that so but he was actually in when i dealt with him in uh, life off stage he was uh introvert and very uh very quiet almost like you know so um yeah you could say that uh if we're talking about ai that uh you could use him as a model for AI. The ultimate yeah. uh, joke machine wants someone that absorbs everything and then regurgitates it, all this information, mm -hmm. on the spot. That's true. That was kind of part of his bag was just having this like huge breadth of you know Shakespearean mm -hmm. knowledge and yeah. knowledge of history and different cultures and different dialects and that he could yeah. you know throw them in there. That and, being said, I don't know that... Uh, well, again, AI is moving very quickly, so, like, who's to say? But it seems like Robin Williams specifically seems like the anti-AI, just mm -hmm. because of how engaged he was and how he was right there. And AI wants context and facts, but doesn't really understand timing, especially. Or hidden meaning, or nuance, or, uh, like, when we talk about uh, breaking up, mm -hmm. deconstructing, right? So that all what all those parts all those things are part of creativity, is finding meaning in imagery, in symbol, in nuance, in tone. Uh, that becomes a, a, a accessory to human communication. Is how what your demeanor is. How are you? How, how what are you communicating? Mean with just by the way you walk into a room. Mm -hmm. All that all that type of stuff. So, um, and I think you also need a certain type of self-awareness to have that uh, uh, kind of empathy, if that's the word that we want to talk, or chemistry, or consciousness, or whatever it is, mm. that uh, probably won't be generated by AI.